hey, this is a nice long podcast. And it's all about, well, it's an experiment in listening. And I'm, this podcast is specifically different than normal podcasts, my podcast. It's set up in a specific way to get you to listen and then have the results. The magical results of what happens when you actively listen and your personal development, your self-improvement, your confidence, your self-esteem just goes through the roof. If that's something that's important to you, was to me and is to me, have a listen after this. Awesome. Hey, welcome, welcome to the Personal Development Unplugged podcast. So pleased you're here. Your time is valuable and precious. So what I would like to do is fill that time that you share with me with the most shiny golden nuggets to help improve your life, to get your goals, your wishes, your dreams to come to fruition quicker, bigger, better than you could ever imagine. Using your imagination, using hypnosis, using NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, all of that, using all things of the mind. No brain hacks, but real solid processes to deconstruct what people do to become great. And then find the processes that we can install that in ourselves to support you in your dreams and get what you really want in life. Anyway, who am I? I'm Paul, Paul Clough, and I'm just going to have conversations with you in this podcast and get you thinking, but also share those processes because we're going to have so much fun. That's it. We're going to have fun for a change because we can sit down for a spell and have more fun than we can stand creating the world we want to live in and be the person we want to be in that world. The only limitation, the only limitation is your imagination. And you've got bucket loads, by the way, bucket loads. Have a listen. You really must. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. Welcome, friend. Welcome, friend. I got a weird thing to do today, and I'm really thinking about doing it in a weird way. And I really need your, your intention to listen. Really set your mind to listen. I've got some great stories that are going to really show this, these, this skill of listening into a different, different level. But we all love to be heard, don't we? Don't we love to, to listen to maybe our own voice a lot? You know, I know it's not you, and it isn't me, but we do know somebody in our lives that loves the sound of their own voice. Now, I find that difficult to say because there I'm talking to you on a podcast, listening to my own voice right now. But we do, don't we? We do love it. Whether we admit it or not, I don't know. But the thing is, do we actually listen? Do we actually listen? Do we actually listen to what we're saying sometimes? I know Richard Bandler, the, uh, one of the originators of NLP, used to say, listen to your words as you speak them. Because if you don't say the words you want to say, you can go, I didn't mean to say that, and repeat what you really wanted to say. But so many times, if we say something we, don't, we didn't mean to say, we just mumble, don't we? And get, try to throw it away and see if someone didn't spot it, basically. But before we go into what really listening is, I guess. Before we dive a little bit deeper, I wanted to just take a general overview, I guess. Again, I want you to listen. I really want you to listen to this. You see, there's a lot of noise around, isn't there? Especially this moment. But there's an awful lot of noise. Noise in the news. And sometimes we listen. Now, do we actually listen to the news? Or do we tune it out? I think sometimes we especially the way it's presented these days. Maybe we just tune it out because, I don't know, maybe we're scared, scared of what we're listening to. Maybe we think there's not quite so much truth in that. You know, maybe no one say lies, but maybe there's a glistening 
and a changing of the truth. I think it's called like being conservative with the truth. You know, there's different emphasis maybe put onto the truth, as it were. You know what I'm talking about. Or maybe we tune out because we just know it's clickbait. And that's what some of the news do. They've, they've stopped actually doing news now, and they prefer to put clickbait up. And you read a title, and then you, you look inside and find out there's nothing of sub substance there. But what about the radio, then? What about the radio? Do we actively, actively listen to the radio? Or do we just have it as background noise to drown out the other noise? I know I do. I love my music. And I have it in the background, but it is just background. If you ask me what had been played, wouldn't have a clue. So, do you know, how active do we listen? And when we're doing this, call it inactive listening, are we getting into a habit of not listening actively? What about podcasts? A bit like the radio, isn't it? And there's so many podcasts around, and it's, you know, ooh. I said to myself when I wrote my notes, oh, that's a bit close to home, Cluffy. Do you actively listen to the podcast? Now, I know I, that's one of the things I do try to do a lot of because I like to share the things with you. I like to learn and then share what I learn with you. You know, it's food for this podcast, food for me, my growth. But there are other ones that I might just listen to and then drift off. Maybe I'm not taking so much attention. And I know the ones I have taken attention to, which one of them will actually uh, raise its head gently and nicely in this podcast. Because I took time to listen to something and something came to me. It was rather, I thought, quite beautiful. And I will share it with you. But maybe we just, I was thinking, maybe we just let the noise of one podcast come in our ears, to push out the stuff that we've already got, and it just disappears, and it just overtakes things. Then I thought to myself, yeah, it can't be in hypnosis tracks, can it? Surely we listen to that, because we we're using hypnosis to, to change. But then I thought, I, I get so many people say, you know, I just want to listen. Find me something that does it. And then they zone out. So there's no active listening there. And if you think about that, this is, that's pure self-development. That's just pure change work. And that's not do to, it's do with. Well, good hypnosis tracks are do with. Get you to come along with the ride. But if you zone out, maybe you're not getting the full effect. You see, hmm, it's difficult, isn't it? Because what I've just gone through, this noise, is all around us, isn't it? Are you still listening to me, actively? Maybe getting some of the words that go in and go out. You have to keep your eye on that one, or your ears. Keep your ears open. You see, there's so much more to just listening, isn't there? You see, usually those examples I've just given have no intention whatsoever. There's no intention. We don't set our intention to do anything, because they're just noise, if we let them be noise. And there's so much more than just listening. Maybe just to a friend. You see, this is what I was saying when I actively listen to a podcast. There's a lovely lady, lovely lady who does Buddhist meditations and talks. She's called Tara Buck. And I was listening to one of her podcasts. Didn't realize how, how long ago it was because it was there and it had been sitting on my little podcast player and I hadn't listened to it. And guess what it was called? The Power of Deep Listening. And I reached out to Tara Bark and said, Could I use that story, the story that you told? And she came back and said, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely share it, Paul. So this is the story that Tara Bark told in that episode, way back in March 21. And she said, there was a woman who shared a story of committing to listening. She said she was going to a family, family get-together, and her brother would be there. 
her brother who was a professor. But she wasn't really looking forward to it because he was always like domineering the conversation. He was always talking over people. He was overbearing. He just didn't stop. And she wasn't looking forward to going to this family, family get together at all. And she should have done. But she thought to herself, do you know what? Going to be in terrible. It's going to be terribly difficult. I'm even look for some excuses, but I can't find any. So I am going to go, and I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to do it with intention, intention to maybe just listen. And I will also use the couple of skills that I know to stay present while I'm listening, so I don't just let the noise come and and drift off. And one of those was just to stay with my breath obviously from a meditation side, I guess, but stay with my breath so I can stay present in the moment, in the now. And she said, I will all, I'll also repeat to myself, there's time. We've got time. Because that's what we do. We give an excuse. I mean, we, we, we want to be somewhere else. We're in a rush. Got to go somewhere. But she said, no, I'm going to say to myself, there's time here. And also, she said, I'm going to repeat to myself, can I hear who he is? So she went to the family meeting. And she, well, she listened to him. She really listened, tried to hear what he was doing. And she listened with compassion, just compassion. And she, she said, she just, I just sat with him. And that's what we did. And all the time I was coming back to my breath to stay in the present, repeating, there's time. And can I hear who he is? That, now, this is not in the story, but this is a wonderful intention, isn't it? You remind yourself of the intention, your unconscious mind works with you. And as I say, she listened with compassion and just sat. And during that time together, they continued their discussions, and she did it on walks to just be with him, actively listening with compassion. And you see, they were listening. She was listening, rather. And it took time. And then he shared something. He shared something about his own personal hurt. It didn't come straight away, you see. She had to sit there with him. And you see, his own personal hurt, hurt rather. You see, he'd heard from his student feedback. And it wasn't very good. He'd been told how not interesting he was. How he wasn't like the other professors. And he's just not as nice as those other people. And as she heard that, she also heard his need for attention, his insecurity, through listening. And then something unexpectedly happened. And you see, that reminds me, reminds me of a discussion I had with someone close in my family. And it was quite weird, because this all came at the same time. We're on a phone call. And they were expressing how, how unmotivated they were at work. And in fact, that was now spreading to other areas of his life. And he just said, you know, things I just can't get, can't get going. Feel so disinterested. And, you know, when I do other things, I just, it's just not there. And, you know, if I go to the gym, I'm, I'm starting to, to injure myself because I'm not really focused. And that brings me down, and that brings that just has an impact on the family, and that brings me down, and then wake up in the morning for work, and I'm just not there, and I should be. In my position, I should be. That's what I'm paid for. But I just can't get it. Am I, am I doing the right thing? Should I still be here? And I let, let them talk, because I thought to myself, this is like active listening. And I ummed and ahed, giving a hmm, <laughs> hmm, yeah, that's right. Listened. And every now and again, I just maybe remind them of the past. 
And I said, you know, what was it like before, though? Because you weren't always like this. I said, because I, I can remember a long time ago, you and I used to do the same type of thing when we used to look at what we were doing in our diaries. This is my other life in another business. And we would plot down exactly what we were doing in the days. We would actually look down the reason for doing it, our, our why. And it wasn't just our big why. It was every little why for everything we were doing. Now, some of that got repetitive because, obviously, I want to make the business better, blah, 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 blah. But there, were, there was a thing there that we, we did. And I said, you know, have you forgotten that? He said, yeah. It wasn't he, by the way. <laughs> Let's be anonymous. They said, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. But I changed it, didn't I? If you remember, I changed it because it was repetitive. But he said, I can remember. When I was really on top of my game, I used to really, I used to sit on a Sunday and plan my week. And not necessarily all the whys, because they came anyway, but I'd plan them. I'd, I'd see how they, they fit with my goals for my personal stuff and then the work, the, goal, the, the work goals as they were. And then every morning when I woke up, I'd plan that day. He said, but oh, yeah, I did. And I, I crushed it. I crushed it when I was doing that. And I said, well, maybe, maybe there's another way to do that. Because he said, sleep is so important to me. And I'm not sleeping well either because of this, I'm worrying about what's happening. So I said, what would happen if you went back and did that planning again? But this time at the end of the day, just put 10 minutes aside. And I told him a story about somebody who said, to close their day off, to close their day off, and move into the, like, the next sector of their day to close their work day off, they would plan tomorrow, there and then. The three things that they need to do, maybe. The three most important things, if they got one of them done, the day would be great. Any more than that would be superb. I said, oh, yeah, I suppose that would, that would work, because then I could like close the door in the office. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. I can forget about it, get on, be with the family, spend proper time with the family. And do stuff. So I said, yeah, I'll think about that. I'll think about it. Because he said, you know, uh, I want to do meditation and things like that. And, and that's all gone by the board. Because I'm not putting it down. And, uh, I, well, just have a little thing. I'm not saying you to do it. But it might be something because it's what you used to excel at. And this is maybe just a little bit of fine tuning. He said, well, I'll, I'll think. I'll think about it. And do you know what happened? Well. Well, think about this, though. Why do we do personal development? Self-improvement. Isn't that to be better than yesterday? To be a better me? To a better you? Me, I? All of us, you and me. We want to be better, don't we? We've got that can I? Constant and never-ending improvement. That's why we're here, isn't it? Or that can I just be 1% better? in one area of my life every day. And to me, that all comes down to listening. Listening in a special way. And when it comes to that type of listening, it still starts with the same thing I say about every blooming thing. It's the same as that lady. She said, I'm going to set my intention. Actively listening with intention. You see, no one tells you that. Well, we do here, don't we? Because it's active. So, everything you do in your personal development, because this goes with everything, doesn't it? Doesn't it go with everything? It's actively listening to that noise or turning off the noise because you don't want to listen to it because it's not developing you. You're actually finding things to develop in yourself. People, friends. And it makes a difference then. You see, I think you need that intention, maybe that state, and actively turning on that's going to make the difference that makes a difference. So let's go back to that list, the news. You see, if you're going to actively listen, you decide. You decide what our intention is 
for doing and listening to the news. Now, is it just to be informed? If it's to be informed, we look for data, don't we? To find the people who are going to tell us a broad spectrum of the news, not just a slanted, unbalanced view. So we decide with intention how we're going to do it. Maybe when we look at headlines, we question, is this just clickbait? Is there any data here that confirms this? Are they just fear mongers? Does it match the criteria of my intention, of what I want, my why? Does it give me the data? And the thing I think is, if you, if you did that, you would look to search out different points of view, isn't it? Because if we get, if we just listen to the stuff that, that backs up what we're thinking, well, it just backs up what we're thinking. What do we learn from that? Oh, we're right, but are we? Because we've just listened to one side. Maybe we listen and actively listen to other people, other opposing views, so we can understand them. We may not agree, but it's our way of bettering ourselves with the information that we have. Therefore, we can think better. And even thinking requires active listening. But we'll get into that in a minute. So. Even if we're going to say, well, I want to be informed, where do we go to be informed? So, before, we said radio, you know, and music maybe. Why play it in the background? Why not just music? Or, we set our intention, this is my background music, and I'm using it to be able to focus, to do my thinking to do my improvement. Or, I want to listen to this music, and I'm actually going to stop for a little while and really listen. And the thing is about music, it can be a wonderful anchor, can't it? It can be a, a wonderful anchor, sometimes in the negative side, because it brings us back those horrible memories sometimes. But if we set ourselves up with intention to listen to this type of music, music and get in state for say, relaxing, active listening, yoga, stretching, going to the gym, all different types of music that anchor us. Now we're doing it with intention, and we're listening to it as a reason. It just works that way. I mean, when I say an anchor, we use this in working with clients. They get to listen to our hypno music before they come and work with us. It's deliberately so. Just a little bit. Hear my voice. And then when they come to do the work, as we start to get more intense, dive deeper into their issue and the, and the solution, guess what comes into the background? That hypnosis music. And they, they just seem to go into the right state. So it puts them in a state. So intentionally, we can listen to music. Yeah. What about those pods? Podcasts. Again, what's your why? Is it because you want, I listen to comedy on, on podcasts. Why? Because I love just listening to people making me laugh. Maybe sometimes I actually just stop and listen to it because it's fun. And for five minutes, I want to actively listen to a bit of fun. Very difficult to do two things at once, isn't it? Or think of me and personal development. I listen to people who give me different views. Some I don't agree with at all. Some will give me things that I think, I know that. They know that. They've got lots of experience. I've got lots of experience. And I believe in them. They're not giving me the hype, the clickbait. So I'm getting more confidence in what I do of what I've learned. Or maybe they're inspiring me to push the boundaries. And I'm thinking, well, that's a lovely process you, you've do, just done, but I think I can improve upon it. I can add something, make it more mine. So, again, we come back to intent, intention and our why. Why is it important to us? But we do it intentionally, not just, oh, I've, you know, we do it for Oh, I listen to so-and-so podcasts. Yes. Oh, oh, always, always. But the other reason I listen to them, because I love to give you 
an update to share what I've heard. Maybe I will share them as a podcast in itself. I've done that with Sam Harris. I've done that with Joe Rogan and other people. Don't get anything for it. I just want to share what I enjoyed and I thought was interesting. Honest and interesting. And I love to take notes, and I do. I actively take notes. And that's my intention of, and I guess in in that way, in those particular cases, because I have a bigger why, I guess, I have more intention and active listening. I take my notes and then I move them around and, and I get the benefit of it. And then journal it maybe, something happens, and guess what? You get it as well. <laughs> and I think that's, to me, that's great because it's sharing. Now, whether it goes in and you go, do you know what? That was awesome. Or you go, mm, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't matter, does it? Because you've actively listened, taken in the data, and decided what you want. And it's a bit like we talked about hypnosis tracks, didn't we? NLP programs or processes. Now, so many people just click and play. Come on, do it to me. And I've had people in my, my clinic saying, you know, just make me. And I say, I can't. Can't make you do anything. You need to have the will to do whatever it takes, and you need to want it. Not make me stop smoking. I don't really want to stop smoking, but make me. No, you've got to be there. It's do with, as I said. So again, it's setting intention. And I know when you set your intention, you're going to listen to a hypnosis track and you're going, my intention is to let go of something. And if you ask yourself, what will help me let go of this anxiety? Or to learn how to be comfortable or to get more confidence? Something like that. I know when you set your intention like that and you look through that list of, if you're looking at my list of free hypnosis tracks, one will jump out at you. One will attract your attention if you ask that question, because now you're doing it with intention. And then when you do that, you're going to actively listen, aren't you? You're going to intentionally listen to the words because you've decided. You've decided that's what I want. And when you do that, as I said before, it, you can't be wrong because you'll listen to that and you'll take out from it what you need. Your unconscious mind will find the closest thing in, that it can see right there and then extract what you need from those processes. And to me, that just works. It really does. Just work. Yeah, it's quite strange, isn't it? But then... Oh, by the way, if you're just new to this and you're going, what are you talking about, Cluffy, about these uh, hypnosis tracks? Go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. There's 50 plus, 50 plus hypnosis and NLP processes for every type of thing you can get. And I'll be adding to them sometime, even more. But that takes me away. You see, then there's listening to others. And that's what we were really talking about, I guess, or what we thought we were talking about. Really listening, active listening, giving yourself to someone, leaving space in the silence to let them fill it. Because how many times when we're listening to somebody, are we thinking about what we're going to say next? We've got that inner voice saying, well, yeah, in, when the gap comes, I want to ask about this. I'm going to, and I, here's the sentence I'm going to use. Have you had that? That's the experience I have when I'm not actively listening. Well, I am. I'm actively listening to myself, but in the wrong time. Inappropriate. That's not actively listening. That's doing it for you. And have you noticed if there's a gap, a silence, you try to fill it. That's not actively listening. You see, if you leave it and let that gap hang in the air, as it were, they will fill it. And that's when the magic happens. I had a friend once. Well, yeah, a friend once. That's not quite the way I mean, meant to say that. But you see, when you leave that space and it comes out and then you actively listen and give them a question maybe to, to keep them going, you hold them to account. And this friend of mine, name was Phil, he would listen to me. And then he would ask the one question that I desperately didn't want him to ask because I'd been avoiding it all the time. And he was so good that he would do it with such compassion. But he would hold me to account until 
I'd gone through it. And it's amazing how just being held in that position, but knowing that there's someone there for you, wasn't hanging me out to dry. He was ready with compassion to support me. And he was doing it with that intention, not just to actively listen, but actively listen in support of me. And bless him, he had some big problems, some big issues of his own, but he put them aside to actively listen to me. And that was what is awe inspiring, something that I aspire to do because he was awesome at it, such a caring man. But then maybe the opportunity is not there to have that person with you because I don't see Phil anymore. I'm not in the same geographical area. But the thing is, what about listening to ourselves? Yeah? How often? Do we actively listen to ourselves? Because it can be really difficult, can't it? Because we can say stuff, sort of faking it, telling ourselves the odd fib, reasons not to listen to ourselves, reasons not to do things, to do the right thing, you know, to be vulnerable. And we can make excuses and give reasons. But if we were actively listening to ourselves, We'd be saying, that's a lot of old bollocks. That's not right. A true friend would hold you to account, wouldn't they? And there's no one who can be a truer friend to yourself than you, holding you to account. How do you do that? How do you listen to yourself? And I, I thought about that because this is maybe part of, or the biggest part of what I'm talking about. How do you listen to yourselves? Because I've tried it. So many times, and if you listen to the end of Tara Buck's, um, Tara Buck's uh, podcast episode, that one, she t- talks you through a, a bit of listening to yourself. My God, I listened to that and it was awesome. But I was, before I did that, I thought about how do I talk to myself or listen to myself because I've asked myself a question and sat quietly. Don't always get answers. Don't also, well, sometimes get nothing. But then I thought to myself, well, how do I listen to myself? To myself, rather. And I thought, well, you use a journal, Cluffy. I call myself Cluffy, by the way. But we're very friendly together. We really are. Um, very informal. But I use a journal, and I talk to myself in my journal, and I listen, and then I write what I'm inspired to write back, I guess. So that's one way I do it. Another way I do it is, and I've talked about this before, the puzzle book, the yellow puzzle book. <laughs> yellow. And I write myself questions, and I think, and I give myself a little time, and then I come back to it because I've written it down in my puzzle book. When I come down, come back to that page, and I flick through them occasionally, and go, oh, yeah, there's another answer. Oh, that, no, that makes sense, because sometimes the answers take a little time to, to germinate inside. Maybe in my meditation, and I don't do meditation enough, but when I do, and I just sit quietly, I get a few thoughts, but generally I try to push them away because I'm meditating and I just want to be in the moment with me. But when I come out of that, maybe because I only do 10 minutes, I feel clearer. Sometimes I just get an understanding, similar with self-hypnosis. I will use self-hypnosis on myself because that's what self-hypnosis is. And I ask myself questions and sometimes I get some intuition, sometimes I get some feelings. But what I generally get is answers elsewhere, in my puzzle book, in my journal, in suddenly some intuition. Just stopping and pausing just works for me. We've talked about that before quite a few times. In, I think there was stop and pause and stop and pause version two. Taking time to just sit quiet and asking those questions and just letting the questions go. If you get an answer there and then, awesome. If you don't, just trust. Trust your unconscious mind. Trust that something will come along. And it generally does in the form of some news, a podcast, a book. Something comes, a friend comes along, someone you listen to, and you go, ah, somehow, having asked that question, your unconscious mind will notice the answer for you. Maybe not your own answer, but it will find it for you. It's that book that you've read 
hundred times and you open up the page and you go, I don't remember reading that, but it makes so much sense now. A little bit like me going back to March 21 in a, <laughs> a why it was on my podcast device. I don't know. But I just felt like listening. And there's one key here. And it's a key that, that is not magical. It's not the secret key. The key is intention. And if you can state it out loud, do so. I'm going to listen. My intention is to listen because I want to get more contact. I want to understand whatever it is. A bit like I said, you know, when you, you ask, what will help me? What is your intention? What's your why? It's so important to listen because it's going to mean this, this and this. You start setting your intention and your why. You're going to find things are going to change dramatically. But we have to remember to set our intention. State our why. If you can say it out loud, sorry, say it out loud. It's going to make so much difference to you. And I know it is incredibly simple. I've, I've rambled on for a long time and it's incredibly simple. But in simplicity, there's genius. Let's make it easy, though. And just listening to this, actively listening, this is the whole point of this one, is you have to do. You have to do active listening, not just listen to this podcast and then go, I know all of that now. I can just carry on with my life as normal because I know it. Because knowing without doing means diddly bloody squat. Knowing and doing is mastery. Doing what you know, knowing what you do. Boom. And then you get better at it and better at it. And that's all personal development, self self-development, and then you tell me about it. Anyway, a little while later, I got a phone call. And in that phone call, there's this family member. First of all, I got a text and said, I've just meditated for an hour. Awesome. Blimey. An hour. There's me with my little 10 minutes. Then a phone call saying, I've got it sorted. I just sat down for a few minutes, wrote down what I'm going to do. And yeah, you're right. If I close off the day, my mind is clear and I can look forward to the morning. So when I go to bed, I know what I'm going to be doing the moment I wake up. I'm going to my gym. I'm going to work out. I'm going to meditate and I'm going to be so fresh. Awesome. That's what I'm going to do. And then I got another text. This is the following day. I was having my cup of coffee. It was about, I don't know, 20 past seven in the morning. And I got a text from that person saying, done the gym, meditate for an hour, ready for the day. Boom. All we did was listen. Give a few suggestions. Didn't tell them. But I had to listen to find out how I could just get them to see it in a different way. Remind them of the past. The things that worked. And then let them Set their intention. And that's why I, I repeated to him, is this your intention? Boom. Isn't that strange? And you see, if you remember, that sister and brother were walking, just listening, and they got that feedback. Not so good feedback. It wasn't interesting. Kept talking, talking over people. Not as nice as the other professors, the lecturers. And unexpectedly, he turned to his sister while they were walking and just said, do you know what? I'm not the person I want to be. Boom. What? It, you know, it took her back. But because she was listening, actively listening, giving time, really hearing who he was, she said, well, who do you want to be? If you're not the person you want to be, who do you want to be? What's got in the way of your desire? Because he said, I, I, I just have this desire to help, help people, help my students, make them come alive, give them support. That's the person I want to be. And he got his realisation. It's like getting his ha-ha moment, I guess. And one of the wonderful things, you know, having realised, you know, those insecurities, that need for attention, was masked, wasn't it? Hiding behind that, talking over people. But now he'd found out he wasn't the person he didn't want. He, 
the person he didn't want to be, and now he knew the type of person he did want to be. And the thing is, if you want that, you've got it in you anyway, because if you didn't have it in you anyway, you wouldn't know to want to. So the day he left, because he obviously had to process that a little bit, so the uh, family gathering had come to an end, and on the day he left, he went to his sister and just said, I really needed you, and you helped me connect to my purpose. Wow, just listening to somebody, giving them the odd prod, got them to realise their purpose. What an outstanding compliment. To me, that was, that's where the magic is. Totally magical. Just being there for somebody. Knowing there's time to listen. Putting time and setting your intention to listen. Can I find out who they really are? What a sister. What a brother. What, a, what people. Could you do that? Could you just... Set your intention to listen. What would happen if you did that to yourself? Start with yourself. Because if you get that, and you, when you start to actively listen to others, it's going to teach you how to listen to yourself, isn't it? Letting those silences be silent. So you can find the answer. Blimey. That's to me, was just magical. So thank you, Tara Bar, for that story. And thank you to my family member for giving me and my unconscious mind an example of me doing similar, nothing as big as that, but similar. Certainly the effect to my family member, they, they're crushing it again. So I wonder, maybe you need to listen to this again, I don't know. But maybe that puzzle book, that journal, that just stopping and pausing, that listening, asking yourself questions, setting your intention. Stating it out loud. You see, Adam, when I write my notes on these type of things, I like to have some side notes of a bit more generality, I guess. And I have a meta one, a meta, something that might encompass everything. And the one I got here was, simple stuff makes massive differences. And this is simple. Not easy, but it's so simple and it makes massive magical differences. It's not really that hard. And when you get into the habit of it and you practice it, practice makes permanent. We know that. Good practice makes better permanent. And it's okay. It's okay to stop and pause and give yourself time. That was another note. What do I want to tell you? It's okay to stop and pause, give yourself that silence, that time, because there is time. Give of yourself. And then it takes me on to how did I want you to feel and how do I feel about this? And it just puts in selfless service. So much in the front of my mind from that. Giving yourself of, your, of yourself for somebody else, for no want of anything in return. Knowing that you're going to get it anyway, but you know, because you learn from it. Which is what I got here. And it's also selfless service to yourself. So maybe I thought, what's important to this? What is important about all of this? And to me, I just came up with, and it was for me and you, I guess, it's just time to listen, listen to ourselves, listen to others. And from there, we'll get to learn, set an intention. And everything then we do just makes things better and better and better. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. And a couple of things I'd love you to do. Obviously, if you heard stuff in there that, that floats your boat, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you heard stuff in there that you'd like expanded upon, I'd love your feedback. If you thought I could do it differently, I'd love your feedback. Did you like the way I presented this one? I'd love your feedback because it's a slightly different way of doing it. You may notice that. May, I'll say that again. You may have noticed that. So if you did email me, email me and do it, by the way, with intention. And take responsibility for it. Email me and send me your thoughts. That's feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Please, I have a call to action. Just listen. Listen to yourself. Listen to others. But also maybe share this. Because if we all 
listen to each other. To learn. Wouldn't the world be different? So much going on in the world where people aren't listening. They're just pushing their own agenda. But if we have to start somewhere, we start with ourselves. So if you would, share this. Share this with everyone you know. It'd be great if you did. Awesome. And remember, you got to... There's things like subscribing, and if you leave a, um, a review on your platform of choice, that would be awesome too. Send me a little screenshot of, of, of it, and uh, I'll send you a little hypno track or something like that. Certainly get an email from me saying thank you and things like that. So if you do that, and remember, free hypnosis, paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. Sign up, you also get a newsletter, and in that newsletter... I'm just basically just reminding you what you might have missed and what's coming and also a little video and I might just put in there a little tip in there in the video. So do sign up for that if you would. And also if you would just have a look at paulcloughonline.com because there's things like Supreme and a Confidence. They're, they're my premium programs. There's not many. You get a massive discount anyway so it makes it truly affordable and there's a money back guarantee so in the time it takes to try it, do it. Don't try it, just do it. And then see the result. If the result isn't what you expected, let me know. Money back guarantee. So there's nothing to lose in that. And there's things like Supreme Inner Confidence. There is creating a wonderful mind palace. Some place where you can go and think. And listen. And set up. The, 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 the limits there are limitless. Then there's deep relaxation and things like looking after your... Or letting go of anxiety. Things like that. Just have a play around and give me your feedback on those two. Okay? Enjoy. Enjoy listening, especially to yourself. So, my friend, it's time to fly. Bye-bye. Warning. You are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.